Hey guys, my name's John. Thanks for stopping by the channel. If it's your first time here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification, and that way you won't miss out on, on any of the content we're gonna be producing over the next couple of weeks. Today, I wanna to talk about drone time lapses, and specifically creating time lapses with the DJI Mavic. Now, if you're using a different type of drone, the uh, techniques that I'm gonna cover cover most, most scenarios, but the software you, I'm gonna use obviously is specific to the DJI drones. So if you're interested, let's get going. So if you go online and you talk to anybody about creating time lapses with your drone, um, there are basically two camps of people. There are people that say use the photographic method and there are people that say use the video method. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do both. I'm gonna show you how to create them and then we're gonna put them side by side so you can see the difference. And I'll let you make the decision as to which is the better way to do it. So firstly, the photographic method. The photographic method involves taking a series of photographs at a set interval. So in theory, you wanna get your drone up in the air, you wanna get it into a nice stable position you want it to hover and not get blown around too much in the wind. And then you want to take a series of photographs. So maybe one every three or one every five seconds for a period of time. And then what you'll do is stitch them all together into a movie. That movie then will show maybe for about six to, to 10 seconds, depending on how many photos you took. And you should see the time lapse effect. Now, to do that, obviously you need to take the photographs, you need to stitch them together to make a movie. Some people say that the video method is easier in that you just shoot some video for a period of time, you load it into your editing app and you speed it up. So we're gonna do both. We're gonna try the photographic method, we're gonna try the video method, we'll put them side by side and we'll take a look. So let's get the drone in the air and take some time lapses. So let's get the drone up in the air. Take off. The well, as we take updated. off, Please check it on the map. you'll notice that it looks a little washed out, and that's because I've got the white balance set to sunny day. Once we get up to altitude, this should clear. We'll go into our camera settings and we'll check that the image size is 16 by 9. We'll go into photo and select time shot. Then we'll select three seconds as the interval between photos. Now we'll climb up, and I'm going to set the altitude of the drone to about 80 meters as we clear the trees and we start to see the background, a nice sunny day, you'll notice the image clears and we'll set the autofocus to infinity or close to it. As the drone comes up to altitude, we've got a nice image with lots of fluffy clouds and it looks like it's a fairly static view. But the whole purpose of the time lapse is to show the clouds rolling across the countryside. So now we'll click on the button where it says three seconds and every three seconds an image will be captured and stored on the SD card on the drone. Okay, I've shortened the sequence a little but when we finished we press the button again to stop taking photos and we'll check that the photos are all stored on the drone by clicking the playback button. And there we are. There's all our individual frames safely stored on the drone. Now we change the camera mode to video. In video mode, it's always worth rechecking your autofocus point to make sure that your image is still in focus. And once you start recording, that's all you have to do is just leave the drone in position and allow it to record for a period of time. You should consider how long you need to record for based on how fast you're going to speed the video up. And you can do a simple calculation of the number of frames that you need to, uh, to equal the photographic method. Okay, we've got everything we need. So for the photographs, the first thing we need to do is stitch them together. For this, I use a free application from the Mac App Store called Interval. You can download it free of charge from the Mac App Store. If you're using Windows, I'm sure there are plenty of applications that do a similar job. So the first thing we need to do is find all of our photographs. Once we've got our folder, we'll launch the interval application. And 
and we'll import the entire folder. Immediately, the application creates our time lapse. On the right hand side of the slider, you'll see how long the time lapse is. And all we need to do is export it as a file. In this case, we'll call it time lapse and we'll place it in the downloads directory. Now, the export might take a while, so I'm going to speed this section up. OK, let's take a look at our time lapses. First, the photographic method. As you'll see from the raw footage, it's a little shaky because the drone's moving around in the wind. So let's add some stabilization. We, to do this, we use the built-in Final Cut Stabilizer. I think that makes a big improvement. Now let's look at the video method. Again, the video method is a little shaky. However, I don't notice a notable difference in quality. Finally, let's stabilize the video method. Well, what do you think? Personally, the video method works for me, given I'm going to be using this in social media posts, YouTube posts, those kind of things where quality isn't that important. I think that the video method works for me, but it really is up to you. If you want the slightly higher quality of the photographic method, then uh, by all means do that. I hope you found this useful. If you have, then please do remember to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and you won't miss out on any of the content we're going to be producing. If you have been, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.